Okay, so Paul couldn't come to Ephesus, so and he left uh, Timothy to uh, oversee uh, this church in Ephesus, right? And he gives uh, Timothy, uh, you know, it's called a pastoral epistle, uh, which means it's written to a pastor, who is Timothy, right? And he uh, warns Timothy against false teachers. And then Paul reminds Timothy that uh, he was uh, a persecutor of the church and Jesus was patient with him. So basically Paul says to Timothy, well, we should be patient, right? So, but then the chapter two ends with, uh, with two guys, two gentlemen, Hymenaeus and Alexander, uh, who made shipwreck of their faith. And then Paul hands them over to Satan. He hands them over to Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme, right? So, uh, and we talked about that a little bit, that Paul talks about that in his letter to Corinthians as well, right? So uh, that's very interesting that sometimes uh, bad things may happen so that our soul may be saved, right? So that focus may be back on God. So this is what Paul talks about. And then he moves on to chapter 2, uh, where he talks about prayer. So, let us read it. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle, I'm telling the truth, I'm not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the man should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet, for Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived by the woman, was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing, if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. So this is the chapter. So the chapter consists of two kind of sections. One is about prayer and second about women. Uh, as far as uh, women uh, go, so we already talked about that when we studied the book of Ephesians, right? So the book of Ephesians is ta also talking about women submitting themselves to their husbands as to the Lord. And this submission thing is so misunderstood by people, right? So uh, because immediately what you think about, you think like abuse, abusers, right? So you think, oh, this crazy person will be telling me. Or, you know, you think about the worst possible scenario. And I just wanted to remind uh, all of us that Paul is talking to Christians. And uh, uh, when we, again, Christians can be different. There are cultural Christians who don't care about Jesus Christ and his teaching at all. What they care is like religious uh, holidays and, you know, uh, going to church as a social event to see their friends and maybe family members. It's not about Jesus at all, right? So we're not talking about cultural Christianity. We are talking about, you know, the true followers of Christ.
Now, if you are a true follower of Christ, you will learn from Jesus Christ. Now, what Jesus does in his life here on earth, he is obedient to the Father, right? So the entire Gospel of John emphasizes that Jesus is not speaking from himself. He's not doing anything on his own. He's doing everything the Father wants him to do. So Jesus shows us absolute and perfect obedience to God the Father, right? So now, if we follow Jesus, we will try to be like Jesus, right? So, uh, if we are like Jesus, so then, in the book of Ephesians, we read about this. Paul says that husbands, love your wives as Jesus loved the church, right? And was ready to give his life for her, right? So... When you see that type of relationship, it's not abuser versus someone who is abused, right? So it's not about victim and somebody who is a tyrant, right? So it's about a loving relationship in which Jesus is present. So if you have husband and wife and you have Jesus between them, then submission just means following like a certain prescribed order and just you know complementing one another looking for God's design and looking like how we complement one another and, and not trying to uh, to dominate over one another so right so you, you, you know that kind of thing so if you remove Jesus between the, the husband and wife then all kind of crazy stuff will start happening right so no, it's a not license to abuse. And it's not just like be abused and shut up. So he's not talking about this. He's talking about relationship of harmony in love where Christ is the foundation. So, and you know, for Christ, it's not uh, denigrating to submit to the will of the Father. So, and in general, this, if you look at what Jesus does and then you know apostles do they invite you to be humble so Jesus was humble he wasn't running around telling everybody I'm the boss right he was he was humble and he says well learn from me so I think it's a very good invitation right so uh, when he talks about women he says uh, Verse 9, likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable uh, apparels with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Okay? That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Good works that flow from your faith, right? Your faith produces these good works. Uh, let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or exercise authority over man, rather that she is to remain quiet, for Adam was formed first, then Eve. Again, uh, it, it, it's a very sensitive issue because we saw centuries of abuse of women, right? So women didn't have these rights, those rights, and, you know. And uh, immediately we want to jump and you know say what you know I, 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 I want to be independent but again we need to bring all that into the realm of loving relationship you know so when someone loves you so much that is willing to die for you right so and if he's willing to die for you and loves you so much then you naturally submit let me give you an example <clears throat> one day uh, the wind and the sun, uh, they uh, were kind of arguing or, you know, who will make a traveler to take off his, uh, his coat. And then the wind started blowing really hard and the traveler was, was keeping holding his coat more and more, right? And then the sun was using a little bit of warmth and then the traveler took off his coat just voluntarily because you know there is no this violent you know interaction 
So, and the same is true here. So if you have loving relationship, then uh, being humble and submissive and uh, willing to willing to collaborate and compromise, right? So, so it just happens naturally. It just happens naturally. You don't have to fight for every inch of your freedom because you feel that you are loved and that they, you know, they care for you, right? So, so uh, as far as prayer goes, uh, it's interesting that uh, Paul invites everybody. Um, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people. He gives us all kinds of uh, prayers here, supplications, uh, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving. So this is what we should do when we pray, right? We do all these things. We thank God, uh, so we intercede when we see that somebody is struggling, right? We, we ask on somebody's behalf, uh, so we, we do all those kind of things. So this is what he teaches us. And then we, we do that for all people, and then for kings, and all who are in high positions. So we do that, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way, right? So we are doing all those things. Uh, not just praying for ourselves, not just praying for our families, but praying uh, for all people, praying for our rulers, um, and if you look at the prayers we pray when we do the prayer of the church, this is exactly what we do. We follow this pattern, right? We pray for the president, we pray for the governor, we pray for all, for all you know, rulers, and then we pray for those who are sick, those who are in need, for the church, you know. We try to, play, to pray for, for everyone. So... And this is good and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. So sometimes you think, why do we pray for all those people? Well, that is because the Word of God tells us to do that, right? So the, we have very clear instructions uh, what we should pray for. So there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He's talking about salvation, he is giving us the gospel, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. So, he was, uh, he is the messenger of the gospel, right? He is the apostle. And uh, again, he emphasizes that Jesus wants everyone to be saved, right? So, and then he continues, I desire then that in every place the man should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel. So now, when you think about men, uh, how they should pray, uh, and women as well, lifting holy hands without anger and quarreling. You know, this is a huge topic about prayer, so now, <clears throat> That will always was a question to me. How can someone hold a, a grudge, grudge against somebody else for long, um, weeks, months, years, and still come to church and pray, or pray in the morning? I mean, how can you pray when you have something in your heart? Right? How can you do that? I cannot understand because. He is not listening to you. And then people say, well, I prayed, you know, and nothing happened, or I prayed, and, you know, the, uh, you know, it wasn't like I wanted it to be, and things like that. My question is, how can you, I mean, you, you see what he wants from you. He wants from you to have clean heart, clear, good conscience, right? So you, you cannot do these two things simultaneously. Pray to him, and then have like all those, I mean, I had people in this church, right? So who come here, they come during the, during the service here and we pray, right? We have, we praise the Lord and you know, and they kind of participate in that, right? And then I stand here 
at the entrance and they cannot come and say good morning pastor they just sneak through this side door like really fast so that they don't talk with me right and when i see that i'm just well they have something against me they are unhappy with something right so now my question is how can these two things i mean something is wrong right because what jesus teaches us he teaches us in the lord's prayer and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us right so this is where you should find this reconciliation and peace you should let that stone or stones go you should let them go so because he says i desire that in every place the man should pray lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling right so which means it should be clean hands clean heart clean mind so i believe that <clears throat> this is where many christians uh don't understand what it means prayer prayer it's not just mechanical you're just sending like text messages to god or something right so it's communication with him right so it means relationship okay so and he teaches us how to pray you know when 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 his disciples when jesus disciples approached him we read in the gospels and they said teacher teach us to pray he gave them he gave them the lord's prayer and and yes we have this section forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. And then Jesus says, if you will not forgive, your heavenly Father will not forgive you. And then it becomes a mess that you come to have relationship with the divine, I don't know who, maybe Jesus, maybe some God, abstract God, right? And you try to balance on the one hand, you w still want this connection with the divine. On the other hand, you don't want to forgive. You still want to hold all those stones in your heart. And, that's, and, and, and I think it's a terrible life. It's so difficult, it's so stressful to live like that. Because you don't have peace. You don't find peace. Now, what Jesus says, he says, forgive, not because they are good, or what they did was right. But because you, you follow his command and you refuse to have this you know, darkness in your heart, this uh, bitterness in your heart, so you just let it go. Not because you agree with what was done to you or said to you. Maybe you were offended, maybe somebody mistreated you, but you, you just let, let it go. So, now the Holy Spirit is in you. Now. He gives you peace. Now you pray to him without quarreling and anger, right? So you don't have that somewhere in the corner of your heart, hidden. So you hide that. You hide anger and quarreling and you kind of pray. I don't know if you can trick God, if you can deceive God like this. He probably sees your heart. He probably sees what, what you have in your heart. I wouldn't play those games with him. So, that is why we have confession and absolution at the beginning of each service, right? So this is where you kind of... Okay, but if you let it go, why do you come back to this after the service? I mean, why would you come back to that again? So this is what Peter says when we will be talking today. It's like a dog coming back to its vomit. You know, or cleansed it's cleansed or cleansed well this is what Peter, Peter said and cleansed uh, washed uh, uh, sow you know swine going back to wallow in the mire right again like in this dirt so why would you do that so that's a big question well when we think about prayer it's a huge topic but I believe that the first st step we see in the scriptures what Jesus wants from us he wants us clean heart. He wants us to forgive. And it's not, we don't lose. Again, we have this mentality that if we forgive, we lose somehow, right? So we didn't win. We see it as a game, right? So somebody does something wrong to me and I should fight back, right? So, and if I don't, I lost. Now I'm 
denigrated, right now I'm humiliated, now I'm you know, not that important. But that is not true. Look again at Jesus. He was bitten, he was humiliated, he was denigrated, but he's the Lord of the universe, right? And he has this power of love and forgiveness. Well, because his weapons are different. He's not dragon. Dragon uses violence and fights back like was, you know, like dragon, right? So Jesus is the lamb. And at the same time, he wins over the dragon. I pray that Jesus teaches us how to do that. How to be the followers of the Lamb. Doesn't mean weak. Jesus is never weak. So he's super strong. So forgiveness is not weak. Forgiveness is super strong. Loving your enemy is super strong. Dying for those who don't love you yet. Dying for everyone, it's super strong. So it's strong. It's, it's power. Somebody told me, last illustration, somebody told me about this forgiveness. Mm. A story which happened during, I, I think, the Civil War here in the United States. There was a battle between two camps, and uh, one of them made a fort of dirt. And it was uh, swampy, it was wet, it wasn't very good, you know. Uh, so not very strong so but what happened when the uh, the other group came up and they started shooting cannons those you know those uh, walls right or what do you call them this wet dirt was just swallowing them they were never destroy were they never they were never able to destroy that fort because it was wet and all this just you know this uh, missiles, they would just uh, uh, sink, you know, into that. And, 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 and they were n never able to capture that fort. So there was not much resistance. This was just like <whistles> absorbed, absorbed, absorbed. So I think that when you forgive and you laugh, it's something very similar. They f fire at you, but you just absorb, you know. It cannot destroy you, just like gets extinguished like really, really fast. And now when you start to interact, when you have this, you know, bitterness, when you have all those, you know, grudges and everything, so this is where the devil gets you on his hook. And then he can play with your games, right? So then it's, then you are no longer obedient to, to, to Jesus. N now you're kind of like, you know, you are away from your shepherd, and then the wolf is playing with the sheep, trying to destroy it. Well, let us pray. Let us pray in the way uh, the Word of God teaches us. Amen.